OpenAI has just released Swarm, which if you have been following this channel before, might look familiar to you. So if you have, by now it should be evident that Agent Swarms is how we're going to reach this next level of AI intelligence, and I'm glad that OpenAI has also acknowledged that. However, there are some key distinctions between this and my frameworks. So in this video, we'll take a deeper look at the underlying architecture of both frameworks, what's so experimental about OpenAI's approach, and then we'll also compare them side by side on real examples. Let's dive in. So let's start from the fundamentals, which is the multi-agent communication. Multi-agent communication, you know, is the primary feature and there are actually a lot of nuances to multi-agent communication and each framework actually does it in its own way. So the key distinction between agency swarm and swarm is that in swarm, your agents share the same conversation thread. So in agency swarm, when you create two agents, for example, they communicate through a special send message tool and they can send messages to one another. So for example, if CEO needs to talk to the developer, it can send a specific task to the developer. The developer will then handle this task and return back to CEO with the response. On the other hand, with Swarm, the agents will not send tasks to each other. Rather, the agents will just hand off requests to other agents. So in this example, if agent A encounters a problem that it can't resolve by itself and it needs to talk to agent B, it will essentially just replace itself in the conversation history and then the user will just continue the conversation with agent B. So that's not necessarily good or bad. There are some benefits to this approach as well. Like for example, you can save on token costs and latency, but the downside is that you can't handle like those super complex workflows where agents need to collaborate together in order to achieve common goal. Another thing that I found interesting about this framework is that it's actually not based on assistance API. And there is already an issue about this, that you cannot use file search, you cannot use code interpreter out of the box, and you have to manage and store conversation history manually. However, I think it's actually been done on purpose because here they say that they wanted to provide you with a solution that can run fully on a client and that does not share state between calls. There's also one more cool feature that I wanted to mention that I'm also maybe even considering adding in my framework, which is context variables. So context variables allow you to hard code certain information, like for example, username. And then when the agent uses certain functions, you can actually reuse that information inside function calls. So as you can see here, for example, the function takes context variables and then prints it in a console. But the cool thing about this framework is that it replaces these context variables on the backend for you. So the agent actually is not required to provide these context variables in the function call if they were provided earlier when you executed your assistant. So this allows you to slightly reduce the load from your agent and you can sort of achieve this with agency swarm if you use the additional instructions parameter. So you can add additional instructions in agency swarm and say, for example, the current user's name is John, please use it for the greet function. But again, the agent will be required to provide that parameter while in Swarm, it will be replaced automatically for you. So now let's compare both projects side by side and actually run them on a specific task. So let's first test Swarm. We're gonna create a few tools with customer service agent, sales agent and issues and repairs agent. So as you can see, the customer support agent can make refunds, it can transfer to sales agent and it can transfer to issues and repairs agent. So to run Swarm, what you need to do is use a special run demo loop, which will activate it in the terminal just like this. So now let's say that I want to make a refund for my TV. So then it executes the lookup item function and executes the refund. Pretty much similar to any other agent framework, but the differences start to appear when you try to communicate to another agent. So if I now say that I also want to purchase a new TV, customer service agent then calls the transfer to sales agent. And now I'm actually talking to the sales agent in the same thread. So the sales agent actually responds to me rather than the customer support agent. And then it's asking me for specifications. So yeah, that's how basically it works in Swarm. Now let's compare this to agency swarms. So let's say that I also have the same request. I want to get a refund for my TV. So the message is a bit cut off because it's in a collab notebook. You can also use the demo gradio method which will open gradio interface but yeah let me just say that there are no details 
So then as you can see, the customer service agent also executes a tool and makes a refund just like before. However, now if I say that I need to talk to sales and if I want to buy a new TV, this is where the key distinction is really going to occur. So as you can see, now the customer service agent is not redirecting me to the sales agent. Instead, it sends a message to the sales agent with all the contacts that the customer is interested in buying a new TV. Could you please assist them with all the available options and ongoing promotions? And then the sales agent comes back to me with some TV models, features and recommendations, which the customer service agent relays back to me. So that's the primary difference. You know, as you can see, the agents are collaborating rather than just transferring the user to other agents. And right now it doesn't make much sense in this conversation, but when it really starts to make a difference is when you have more complex workflows with multiple agents where a single agent needs to combine the results from multiple agents together in order to provide the user with the response. And you actually can achieve the same thing as in the Swarm framework if you simply use the add sign and then type the name of the agent. So you can say add sales agent, please provide more info. And now as you can see, the thread is between me and the sales agent in the same conversation. So it's the exact same thing as in the Swarm framework, except you need to type the name of the agent that you want to speak with, and then this will activate this agent in the exact same thread. So in conclusion, let me just talk about some key considerations on when you should use which project. So in my opinion, Swarm is ideal for any research. So if you want to experiment with agents and you want to have greater control over the underlying system, then Swarm is perfect. You can easily fork it, as I said before, you can copy the code, go through it in literally like 15 minutes, understand everything, and then create maybe like even your own project with some unique communication flows that no one attempted to create before. On the other hand, if you're aiming to deploy systems in production, if you're working with more complex tasks where you need to scale your systems, definitely go with Agency Swarm because again, it's going to be incredibly hard for you to scale Swarm since anytime you need to add a new agent, you will have to create this new tool called transfer to like another agent. So if your agent system starts to grow and you have like tens of agents and then you need to add another agent, you will most likely have to create at least like five or 10 tools for all other agents that you want this agent to communicate with. While in Agency Swarm, you can simply add it into the second level list, just like this, wherever you want to put this agent and it will automatically be able to communicate with the other agents in this list. Also, since it's not built on Assistance API, if you go into production, you will also have to build a lot of infrastructure to save the conversations, to load them later. So you'll have to have like a database or something. And all of this setup can also complicate your project. So basically, if you want to learn and design agent systems from scratch, then use Swarm. And if you are planning to actually go into production, if you're building agents for real use cases, I highly recommend using Agency Swarm. We also have a Discord community and our project is fully supported, unlike Swarm, so you can find some help from other agent builders. So I'll leave all the links down below. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe.